Hey guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the newly revamped right wing tier list for Honkai Star Rail. There has been huge changes with regards to the naming convention. Namely, we have they have removed the S plus, S minus, A, B plus, and they have instead subscribed to the CN communities, roughly CN communities guideline when it comes to tier list to tier 0, tier 0 0.5 on the count stuff, right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and see what changes have they made. Subscribe! Uh, increasing overall power and number of characters revealed some flaws in our old tier list which we attempt to remedy under the new system so first of all the biggest change is going to be the changing from the letter um, to the number system right so that the closest of the character power was not well conveyed uh, the difference between A tier and S tier was largely up to the interpretation of the viewer and whatever experience they have to help with that they're going to be changing the format from letters to numbers to better represent the closeness of characters between tiers S plus is tier 0 S is tier 1 A is tier 2 and then when you have something in between like tier 0 0.5 I believe is some Somewhere between S and S plus tiers too, just to make it a little bit more um, segregated, if that can be a say. New feature, meta lines. So the above is a start, but not a good enough reason to fully explain the positioning of characters on the screen. So we add a new meta lines to categorize each section into a power bracket. So we have apex, meta, niche, and the forgotten ones. So apex characters, so basically, I believe uh, everything at tier 0 and tier 0 0.5, they're all apex characters. Outrageous amounts of damage, provide massive buffs or keep the team alive no matter what enemy throws at them. Simply achieve the best, most consistent accessible results in their best teams. Know that the criteria here is to clear MOC and pure vision. It is not to get a zero cycle. So that's the very important thing to keep in mind. Meta characters is their clearing pure vision a breeze, but compared to apex, they require more work on your side. So either their team options are more restrictive, require more relic investments, or they put Possess a notable weakness or downfall. Still very great, won't disappoint you. So pretty much they are they still can clear MOC, but you just need to put in a little bit more effort. All right. Niche characters are the one lacking in one or many fields of their roles and MOC of pure fiction. Possess the ability to clear all content with the right build endgame blessing enemy lineup but have to play lower play rates and success rates than meta and apex character. Then the forgotten ones is just basically um to further define the tier list and correctly represent the power level of each character, we have added half tiers. A tier rating jump of one tier made it difficult to position characters accurately, leading to multiple characters in the same tier despite a clear power and utility difference. I think the biggest gap you guys can see is pretty much between the previous S tier, you can see like Ratio, Scylla, Invisible Renate, and all that kind of stuff. So it can be a little bit uh, hard to visualize, so I think this is a pretty good change. New feature text split into three categories, pros, cons, and archetype. This is to define which meta and which archetype we're going to fit into. I guess it's a connection between characters and what tech. For example, Aircrow requires debuffs to work and Sailwolf supply them. And then there's also a light cone criteria. Uh, light cones on their account compared to the early days due to this, we have relaxed the light cone restrictions by slightly changing the criteria to from allowing only exclusively free to also including S5 gacha light cones like Memories of the Past and Standard light cones. Note that this does not include any form of Battle Pass light cones and limited light cones or higher super division of standard light cones. Right? So this is basically standard S ones and Gacha S five. So I'm getting Akron uh, released from in the past. She has proven herself to be an absolute powerhouse amongst all levels thanks to her flexibility in team building, strong damage and multipliers, and the ability to do toughness bar damage to all elements. Uh, she edges out in build and team like this time. I think this is absolutely valid. There is no issue here whatsoever. I think she is way, way, way better than Invisible and Tinio. So absolutely nothing wrong here. Robin, Sparkle, and Ramay, the holy trinity of harmony, with each having their own defined specialty, but the capability of being used in almost any team to get great success. In memory of chaos, these three characters are absolute apex, but with defined specialties and varied powers, our teams could not decisively place one or two of them in the absolute top tier of tier 0 just yet, and we decided to place all of them in the tier 0 0.5 together. For pure fiction, double DPS are far more common than in memory of chaos, that's why I feel the Robin and Ramay, they are more valuable. I think that's pretty fair because we have seen like Herda, Himiko, Topaz, Ratio, uh, hey, even DOT, they are all dual DPS, and in this specific scenario, uh, you would want to run Ramay and Topaz, or Ramay and Robin for your dual DPS team comps, so that is pretty fair. Uh, let's just take a look and see what do we have with the actual list itself, right? So, chat, I'm gonna keep it up. I really don't give a damn about pure fiction, so I'm not gonna cover pure fiction. Let's go along tier by tier. So, from our damage dealer to specialist to amplifier to sustain, uh, damage dealer, Akron tier 0 with Imbibitor Rune E0 and Jing Liu S0. I think this is pretty fair. This is skill point negative because he uses more skill point and Jing Liu is skill point, but I think it's a little bit more skill point efficient, right? So, I think there isn't much to debate about. I don't think there's anyone that even come close to Akron. So, this should be fine. Uh, ratio being at tier 1 with debuff and follow up, and 1.5 is Clara, Jing Yuan, Qing Xue, and Silla. 
Let's just continue on. Blade is going to be a meta character at tier 2. I think we need to take a look at tier, tier 3 and tier 4 before we can determine what is this. Argenti is the same tier as Misha and Serval. Tier 4 is going to be these units and tier 5 is just absolutely unusable. If we're talking about our current memory of chaos, I would not personally plays blade above argenti that's just my personal reason i don't think he performs very well at the current moment especially since we do not have a side that's weak to wind especially in mock 12 argenti honestly has shown pretty decent performance against aventurine uh, since he can very easily get the full 180 energy uh, and the second boss is weak to physical so i personally would just place uh, argenti up with the same tier as blade if not even dropping blade lower than argenti but that's just my personal opinion misha personally i have not used Misha a lot myself. In fact, I've never used Misha myself, but I have seen a couple of users uh, where Misha does perform pretty decently uh, on the adventuring side. But to that, I don't really have much to say. Himiko, honestly, I would be quite interested to see a Topaz Himiko Robin comp on the first half since that guy is weak to fire, right? But then again, you might not be able to do the dinosaur, so that's going to be a problem. I'm not going to comment on anything in tier 4 because honestly, I don't use them enough to, to talk about. I would personally think Argenti should be up here. Blade is a little bit down. I have no idea why Clara and Jing Yuan is at this phase. I guess Jing Yuan is pretty good on the first half against the uh, Kokoda side since it is weak to lightning. I guess you kind of have to run him with your either Huan Huan or Fushan to deal with the crowd control. And his usage is quite limited to, to side one. It's like if Clara is going to be at this tier, why is Argenti not up there? I think Argenti is a little bit low. In my personal opinion. Scylla, I think is fine. Scylla, she works, right? You give her the investment, she's going to work with the Fushion. And now you have Sparkle, you give her good creation, but granted, you do have to have good creation. Honestly, as much as I hate Qing Chue, it is what it is. Okay, she's uncomfortable to use, but when she works, she works, right? I feel like we can squeeze in one more tier one. I think tier one is a little bit empty. I think there's a little bit too many tier 1.5s. If I were to bring up one tier one in this current phase, it's either going to be... Scylla? No, actually there's no one else. I I'll just bring up Scylla to tier 1. Especially in the quantum half. Especially when you're considering Ezo. Because we are not using signature light coin, guys. This is Jing Yuan without before dawn. Clara can run Aeon. It's not too bad. Scylla does work quite well with cruising. As well as the fact that Rachel works quite well with cruising. Personally, I I'll just bump Scylla up. Especially in the situation where we're not going to be running signature light coins. And let's just be real blade without signature light coin. Is, is this jank? Because Blade Singer Light Coin is the only one that gives him HP. No other Singer Light Coins gives him the, the HP buff needed. Argenti, you, I mean, if we're going to be running Erudition, Breakfast, the new MOC debuff, he does perform pretty decently, in my opinion. Yeah, that's just me personally. I'll just bump Scylla up. You can call me a Scylla sim. You can call me because my Scylla build is unreadable. But since the criteria for 1 and 1.5 1 is that we need to give them good relic investments, I'm merely following the criteria, right? I'm assuming that Scylla does have good relic investments and she does exceptionally well inside 1. Everything else, I think it's more or less fine. I don't really have the comments for, for any of this below. Specialist. Black Swan Kafka at tier 0 0.5. Topaz at tier 1. Um, Nobody at tier 1.5. I still don't really feel... Why Queen Iphone is not the same tier as Luca and Sambo? If anything, Sambo feels kind of weak. We don't really have a win big stage in Mock 12. I guess you can use him in Yan Qing, right? But like, why is Queen Iphone not the same tier as this? I would say Xue Yi. Honestly, I've seen like the couple of PvP battles that people fight with Xue Yi. She's been performing pretty well. Even in the CN usage rich, she has the lowest average clear cycles across unit usage rich. I would say she's, she's pretty decent. Especially when her light cone is very, very accessible. You have the new break effect light cone at S5, right? And since they are going to be using Gacha 4 star light cone S5s, I would say Xue Yi is honestly pretty decent. Especially in the first half as well in Quantum. If anything, I will bring up Xue Yi to 1.5. I can't wait to raise my Xue Yi because I just got E6 today, so I'm going to be waiting to use her. I'll bring up Shade to 1.5, bring up Queen Iphone to tier 2. Tier 1, I think Tobias is fine. I think Tobias is fine where she is. Bless one Kafka, honestly. If we're gonna be going by the definition of like a unit as game changing as Akron, I don't think they are as game changing as Akron. So I think them being at 0.5, I can kind of see why the rationale is gonna be here. I would say Topaz at E0 S0 is kind of sus because cruising is just like a, it's a pretty sus like one on Topaz. Welt, I have not seen Welt for like a billion years at this point. Is what it is. Uh, Shu Shang also have not seen. So I think specialists just as a role. I think there is not much 
to be talked about. It's just the Shuei bringing up, Green Iphone bringing up, and Topaz bringing down with 1.55. Honestly, I wouldn't mind Shuei going to tier 1. I've seen Shuei does like, do stupid, stupid things. Uh, anyways, Amplifier. Robin, Rame, and Sparkle. I think the rationale is basically they all have their own usage. Hyper Carry, Follow Up, uh, and I guess this is like DOT, and to a certain extent, she can kind of slot in, right? Like, if you want to talk about best in slots, this best in slots is going to be DOT, this best in slots is going to be Hyper Carry, and this best in slots is going to be Follow Up. They are very, very clearly defined as best in slots. As of this day and age, all these comps, they can pretty much zero cycle now. Assuming none of them have their signature light cones, they have a lot of a lot of other substitutes as well. You can run Bronya signature light cone on everyone. You can run the Marys the Pass on Rame. Uh, Sparkle can also run. So, so Bronya S1 is also kind of kind of good. I kind of okay with being all of them at tier 0 0.5. I need to play Robin a bit more to kind of figure out how she feels. I haven't played her enough yet, but they all feel pretty fine. Especially when you add in your second support, like your Silver Wolf, your Sparkle, eh, sorry, your Ting Yuin, your Pella. Keep in mind, this, this is not a zero cycle tier list. This is just a very generic tier list. So, uh, tier one, Ting Yuin, Silver Wolf. Okay. I think I have to ha, disagree here. I really, really think that Silver Wolf, her use has been exceptionally well uh, for this specific MOC. I would legit bring her to tier 1, if not even like, maybe even 0 0.5. I think she, her weakness break when you slot in the team, because this is taking into consideration your best slot team comps, right? She she legit enables so many things for for your um, side 1 because of the quantum week. And the dev down stacking and all that kind of stuff is also really, really good. Uh, e 0 as yourself, I would say there might be a bit of a ultimate uptime issue because E1 Silv, it makes your ultimate cycle a lot quicker. That means I'm not sure if they include the event like one, but if you do have event like one Silv, then that's completely fine. I'll personally jump bump up to tier, tier 1. So yeah. Bronya. We are just in a situation where there are a lot more duo DPS, there are a lot more DOT, and hyper carry, they're just not the forefront of the battle anymore compared to the old patches. Because the old patches, it was it has always been hyper carry, and Brian has been a pretty good hyper carry support. But now that they have come up with follow-up team comms, they come up with DOT team comms, they come up with like your break break team comms, even there are just a lot more alternatives to hyper carry. And I would say Bronya's placement in 1.5 is, is pretty is pretty good. At least I feel that she's not as universal as Teamwind because Teamwind is just Teamwind, right? She's she is her. Pella at tier 2. I feel that she could go up a bit higher. I feel like Silver can go up and Pella can go up. AoE ultimate deals with Argenti very, very easily. Skill point positive. Pretty good. Ice rest down, always a blast for, for the ice rest side. Argenti is uh, sorry, adventure is literally big to ice. So, Asta, Hanya, Yukong. I think these three is kind of like, yeah, kind of it is what it is. These three is kind of like in purgatory zone at this point. Offensive supports, they work exceptionally well in this current MOC, such as your Sylv and Pella, because they count towards the memory of chaos debuff stacking, right? And you can hit the six stacks earlier running Pella and Sylv compared to, say, any of these supports. All right, sustain. Aventurine and Fushu in the same tier with Huan Huan in the second tier. I would say if this category is strictly defined by sustain and only sustain, I agree that uh, Fushu and Aventurine, they sustain better than Huan Huan. Unfortunately, it is what it is that in terms of sustain, they sustain better. But if we're talking about like the, all the utility provided, she's definitely up there. She's definitely up there for the utility provided. Between full strength and adventuring, if I could only pick one tier zero, I honestly would pick adventuring because they both sustain very well, but eventually does more damage. And Fushen has the problem of getting nuked by huge AoEs such as uh, Aventurine himself. The only downside for Aventurine is that you can't really run him with HP's, HP depleting units like Blade and Qingdu. Everyone else, you can just run him. Luocha tier 1. I say he's it's, it's alright. Uh, I would say Luocha has, has been performing pretty good on site too, Mach 12, because his AoE ultimate can deal with the dicers quite easily. And on top of the fact that his ultimate is also considered as a damage, so it helps to charge the MOC debuff. So I think Luocha is not too shabby, not too shabby. Gallagher, okay, I think Gallagher's sustain is really, really good. You can use him side one, side two, he works, he sustains, he heals, he cleanses. He's pretty skill point positive as well. And he also contributes to the break. No offense to Lotha means I will bring this up to tier one. I will I will legit bring this up to tier one. I, I think Gallagher has been very, very comfy so far. His heals has been really, really good. Tier two here. This current phase, Ling's sustain is nowhere close to Bailu and Japart. Her heal amount is just simply not there. She doesn't heal enough. The multipliers are too low. Bailu with the invigoration and revive, Japart with the torn chance as well as the Thick, 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 thick shield. Links, in terms of sustain, 
Doesn't feel like she's doing enough. The gimmick is the team white cleanse. I'll bring Baidu and Japar to tier tier 1.5 and bring Gedegra up to tier, tier 1. Lins can kind of stay here. I do believe that she is miles better than March and Natasha. So, so she has that going for her. I think that is pretty much it for this tier list. I do believe that this tier list is an overall improvement. To compare to the old tier list, I don't think that this is really that bad, honestly. The segregation is good. There's not a lot of units lumped up in the same tier. I, I do believe this is, a, this is a step in the right direction. I think they need to more clearly define the stages like for Mock, because Mock keep changing. If we were to take into consideration like, all of the buffs and the criteria, there could be a few shifts here and there. Like this can go up, this can go up. Um, this needs to go down, this needs to go up. Yeah, I think overall this this mock, this, this list is really not that bad. I'll give it like a solid, like a like an 8 out of 10, honestly. I will be looking forward to my hook zero cycle, because chat made me raise this this hook, so that's that. Looking forward to when boot heal comes out though, because I, I think by the time we're going to have the third mode, Apocalyptic Shadows, I am way more interested in Apocalyptic Shadows than Pure Fiction, not going to lie. Pure just doesn't feel good. It's just because I'm dealing with mobs. Right? At least I feel like I'm actually fighting a boss. That's gonna be the end of today's content. If you wanna engage in the discussion, drop down to the comments below or head on over to Discord.g for just Pokies Village where we have a very active community on a daily basis. Check out my stream, that's Twitter, TV voice in the book. I'll do the comments in the book. I'm sure every day. Curry doing day seven on my Sabaton. I'm not sure when this video will go up. Hold it as soon as possible. So all the best for Robin Poos. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.